Bruce Lee versus Chuck Norris. I'm an absolute Bruce Lee nut. <laughs> Bruce Lee movies are what got me into martial arts in the first place. And a lot of my students, even my business partner, Connor, I'm looking at you, Connor, they just don't get it on the whole Bruce Lee thing. I think that's really too bad. This guy was such an innovator. Look. The year is 1972 and he's throwing out arm triangles 12 years before the Karate Kid comes out. This guy will always have such a special place in my heart. And to share my love of Bruce Lee with you, we're going to do a breakdown of the best fight scene of all times. Bruce Lee versus Chuck Norris. Now, one of the most iconic things about this fight scene is the warm-up that they do in the beginning. So while they're warming up, I'm going to fill you in on the backstory of this. In the movie, Bruce Lee's family owns a Chinese restaurant in Rome. And this gang keeps harassing them, trying to get money out of them. Bruce Lee has beaten up all the thugs until now. Chuck Norris is the final thug that the mob is trying to throw at Bruce Lee. The fight is actually iconically happening in the Colosseum. I've actually been to the Colosseum and stood where they fought. Unbelievable. Now, one of the things you got to consider is what a big giant deal this was when it came out. You had Bruce Lee, this cultural phenomenon that was happening over in Asia. And he was just the biggest star in China. Versus Chuck Norris, the strawberry blonde karate master from the West. And Chuck Norris was a very legit competitive martial artist. As legit as really you could be back then. He was a very accomplished point fighting karateka. And when this matchup happened, people were so excited. It was this amazing clash of cultures. Who's going to win the Kung Fu master from the East versus the karate master from the West? Here's how we're going to do this. We're going to treat it like it's a real fight. You can learn a lot about fighting from watching the biggest name in martial arts, even 50 years after his death, Bruce Lee. So, yes, it's choreographed. We're going to treat it like it's real. It's going to be a lot of fun. Lee comes out taking the southpaw stance. Lee is very famously a right-handed southpaw. He likes to put his good side in the front. Chuck Norris goes orthodox. Chuck Norris can switch stances a little bit more than Lee. So one thing to really notice here, a lot of lead leg stuff. This is very influenced by karate, by Taekwondo, traditional martial arts. The year's 1972, so like Muay Thai hasn't really become super popular over here yet. There's gonna be a lot of lead leg stuff. Also, a lot of spin kicks, in particular, the wheel kick you can see here. Bruce Lee goes for a spin kick, lands in the orthodox stance. He's not really great from that stance. Takes a big old spin kick right to the face. Down goes Lee. Chuck Norris feeling pretty cool about that one, you can tell. So Bruce, you can tell he wants that one back. No one likes getting hit by a spin kick. But he gets absolutely crushed by this karate style, so karate style. I mean, look at this. Hand by the waist. That is so old school, it's unbelievable. That, uh, it's so fun to see what Chuck Norris do it. There's the hand to waist again, and he throws with the big shoulder throw wheel. This is such a funny moment. Imagine being grabbing your chest hair and it completely paralyzes you, that's great. And you can see there, they throw out another wheel kick. They're big on the wheel kicks. It's really super integrated into the fight scene. So Norris whooping Bruce Lee's ass. Unfortunately for Norris, this ain't a Chuck Norris movie. This is a goddamn Bruce Lee movie and it's time to bring out the funk. What do I mean by that? I mean this. So Bruce has just broken out two keys to victory here. The first being that bounce. The second absolutely critical thing 
is going to be this right here. This is a certain kind of fate called a preemptive faint, meaning Bruce started the action. That's going to start to get Norris guessing as to when Bruce is coming in. The second thing that Bruce is going to start doing are reactive feints. Notice, as Chuck Norris comes in, Bruce Lee brings the leg up, stopping Chuck Norris's attack. It's like a defensive feint. Now, keep in mind about the feints. That's going to be huge later on. But now we're going to see the bounce. The point of the bounce is to show aliveness, to show mobility. Watch this little parry here. Martial arts at this time were very stiff, and Bruce Lee was very inspired by boxing when it came to the footwork. Watch this. He misses the first block, but he still uses the head movement to get out of the way. Uh, check this out too here. Bruce Lee really likes this move where he puts his hands on the floor to get out of spinning attacks, especially the wheel kick. This style footwork was very inspired by like Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Robinson, and you can really tell that Chuck Norris does not do this. He's very much in the rooted, station, more stationary type of styles of martial arts. There's the hand on the ground thing to get out of the wheel kick again. Now, we're about to get it on. We're about to see a third type of feint here. This is a drawing feint. Watch, Bruce Lee is gonna have that right hand in the front. He's gonna throw that right hand at Norris. It's just a feint, but it's meant to draw out some attacks from Norris. In this case, two big misses. You can definitely begin to sense uh, the momentum shifting now. And I think Norris is even a little bit thrown off by all this weird bouncing. We got some lead leg stuff and, and coming up, I, I think this, this next scene here, this right here, is just beautiful. Watch this, we've got Bruce Lee ducking under a kick, getting those hands on the ground, immediately coming up throwing a high side kick. Really, really quality stuff from Bruce Lee here. He's, he's Bruce Lee, you know, he does Bruce Lee things. This is big. We've got our first significant strike landed for Lee. It's that lead low leg kick. Now, in Chuck Norris's mind, he's registering, okay, all right, gotta watch out for that low, low, that low leg kick. And here's what happens. Bruce Lee fakes it, then he goes up high. This is where Bruce Lee becomes a master of feints. He hits you with one thing, immediately fakes into the next. Watch. Draws out the low check from Norris, then goes up top with the high kick. Kicks to the middle, leaving the high spinning kick open. We've got our first spin kick landed for Lee, and this attack here, this would never work. Sometimes he gets a little goofy. It's 1972. You gotta give him a break. <laughs> This kick, however, that Bruce is about to set up is straight fire and works all the time. Watch this. Lands his first oblique kick. Okay, that hurt. Lands his second oblique kick. Chuck is, you know, really starting to think about it. So much so that he's ready to check it by the third oblique kick, right? So there's the check from Norris right there. He's really hip to the idea that Bruce likes to throw the oblique kick. This leaves him open for this jumping attack. So what happens? Bruce Lee first sells the idea of the oblique kick by looking down and throwing out his leg like it's an oblique kick. However, what he's really going for is this jumping roundhouse kick right here. Pretty dope stuff. So now we're gonna see Bruce Lee layer some stuff together here, right? Show off a really high fight IQ with a lot of feints. He starts things off with the straight lead punch here, right? This is Bruce Lee's best punch. This is the intercepting fist from the way of the intercepting fist. And now he's got Chuck Norris really thinking about that straight lead. Just the oblique kick, just like the low leg kick. He uses that to set this up. Goes high with the straight lead, gets Chuck Norris to block high, but it leaves Chuck Norris's body open down low. Nice little use of the high-low feint there, right? Bruce Lee gets the little stopping sidekick, but then he goes for that same attack and somehow ends up with this. So what happened? Watch. Bruce Lee goes for that attack. He goes high-low, but Bruce uh, Chuck Norris backs up. Bruce Lee then goes low, making Chuck Norris block low, leaving Chuck Norris's face open for the high hook. Left cross, right high kick. So he used so many layers to set that up. And this right here, we're gonna see Bruce Lee break out the Wing Chun. Did you see it? Did you see this little hand here? Watch. Did you see him pull down the hand there? Man, he was fast. So legendary fast, and he's about to go off. So 
now Chuck Norris is really concerned. So much so, he's going to try to mimic Bruce's bounce. And this is a really interesting part of the scene because it's almost like Bruce shows disdain for him attempting to bounce by doing this. He starts with the straight lead. If this was the UFC, fight would have been stopped right there. But this ain't the UFC. This is 20 years, more than 20 years, 21 years before the UFC. And this is a death match in the Coliseum over a Chinese restaurant, man. We don't fuck around when it comes to this. That's old school. That used to be a lot bigger than it is now, these low sweeping attacks. Man, that was a nice one. I've never even seen that uh, outside of this movie, really. Or Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee's known for that low sweep, but I don't really see anyone do that one. I'd be interested to have it taught to me. And this is where it really becomes it. Just massive blows from, from Bruce. This seals the deal. He's known for this low side kick to the knee. That should be it, right? That should be it. But I think they very intentionally um, wanted to show about the fighting spirit by Norris not giving up here. Uh, very like samurai warrior tradition. And you can tell he's fucked. <laughs> it's funny, this, this became Chuck Norris's, uh, this became his big break. After this, Chuck Norris was able to launch his legendary career. You know, Walker, Texas Ranger, um, Lone, Wolf, Lone Wolf McQuaid, all that stuff. But right here, well, he's about to get killed. I'm sorry if I gave it away if you didn't know that was coming. <laughs> but the ending is, is a little bit... Well, I'll, we'll see. We'll see. It was so great right up into here. It's weird that they chose to end it this way. Imagine being in this situation, you want to fight so bad, you just want to die. I think this at this moment, they really show the respect for each other. There's the cat. And it's an arm in guillotine. And what's really interesting is that... I gotta kind of fault them on this. They kind of make it seem like Bruce Lee broke his neck. <laughs> like, I think they should have just choked him. I think they just should have choked him to death if they were going to do this a death battle. Um, that's the one thing I can fault Lee on on the fight scene was why I don't. I it's hard to break someone's neck with a guillotine. I don't know anyone that can do it. I'm sure someone could, but that's the one fault. But this was a masterpiece in my opinion. I mean, this is 20 years before the UFC. This is. Oh man, I've watched this, uh, so I can't even remember how many times, so many times. And this is a nice scene here at the end, right? You get Lee throwing on his uniform again. And um, what's gonna happen is to show respect to his opponent, he's gonna get Chuck's uniform here. And he's gonna, he's gonna throw it over him, watch. So you can see him get the, finds the black belt in the uniform top. And this actually made a, a big impact on me as a kid. It, it made it show that Norris was a very different foe than the mobsters he saves face before. This was another martial artist, and this was someone who deserved respect. And learning to respect your opponent and earning someone's respect through combat was very profound for me as a child. And Bruce Lee taught me that.